All right, today's lesson tacks on to yesterday's lesson. Yesterday, we just divided using whole numbers. Today, we're going to be talking about what happens when there's a decimal and the dividend. Remember, the dividend is the number under the house. So we have the dividend and we have the divisor. Okay, so why is there a decimal sometimes? Well, sometimes it's because a number might not have an equal number of pieces in each group. An example of that is we have 22 flowers right here, and we're asked to put them in five groups. And I can try to do that. But I'm going to have some left over. There's no way to make an equal amount of five groups out of 22. So what happens is we have a remainder. Okay? We have an unequal um, amount, so we end up having a remainder. So that's when our decimals come into play. So you're used to putting, if there's a remainder, you're used to putting like R, whatever, whatever. Okay? We don't put the R and then the number. Okay? We don't do remainders anymore. The way we do remainders is in the form of a decimal. So it gives you two little notes right here. It says when the dividend is a decimal, you have you can follow the rules for dividing whole numbers. So it's the same exact rules that we did yesterday, except we have a decimal. There's only one extra step. However, remember to keep your place value organized and to bring the decimal straight up into the quotient. So the quotient is up top. So if I put up here quotient, that's the answer, right? The quotient goes up top. So basically, same steps. We just have to remember to bring the decimal up. And that's what we're going to do. So let's look right here. We have to 53 and 2 tenths divided by 14. 53 and 2 tenths is going to go under the house. I'm going to divide it by 14. Since I have a decimal under the house, the very first thing I need to do is bring that decimal up. Now everything is normal, okay? So we're going to ask ourselves 14 to go into 5 zero times. 0 times 14 is 0. Bring down my 3. 14 to go into 53 about how many times? Well, if we double 14, we get 28. If we double 28, we get 56, and that's too much. So we can't do 4, so let's try 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. So when I subtract, I end up with 11. So my next step is to bring down the 2. So now I have 112, and we're trying to figure out how many times will 14 go into 112. Well, like I said, 2 times 14 is 28. 2 times 28, which would be 4 times 14, is 46. Double 46, and we get 112. So let's try 8. Okay. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. And look, we did it. So now there's nothing else to bring down, and we have a remainder of 0, so that means we check off and we're done. So our answer is 3 and 8 tenths. All right, now let's look at number 2. Okay, the first number goes under the house. The dividend goes under the house. Divisor goes outside the house. We ask her, there's no decimal, so we don't need to bring anything up. So we can ask ourselves, 30 will go into 3 zero times. And we can bring down our 7. How many times will 30 go into 37? Well, it's only going to go in there once, right? So now we can subtract. Bring down our 8. After we subtract, we always bring down. So 78. 30 times 2 is going to be 60. 30 times 3 is going to be 90. And 90 is going to be too big, so we got to go with 2. Now I have 18. 
So this is when there's nothing else to bring down. This is when you would usually come up here and you would write your R18, remainder 18. But we can't do that. Okay, we're not doing that anymore. We're not babies. We're big kids now. So when there's nothing else to bring down and I have a remainder still, what I do is I add a decimal. So if I add it under the house, I add it to the top as well. And I add a zero behind it. Now I can bring that zero down and I have 180. 30 can go into 180 six times. Now I have nothing else. I have nothing else to bring down and I have a remainder of zero. So that means my final answer is 12 and 6 tenths. You do the same thing for number three. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to try number three on your own. Alright. So when you work this out, you should have worked it out like this. So you should have gotten 6 and 9 tenths as your final answer. If you didn't, you need to pause the video and you need to go back and check your work compared to mine. Okay, you need to see, did I multiply correctly? Did I subtract correctly? Those are usually the, typically the biggest place where you mess up the most. Okay, so this is long division. You have this side you can practice doing, okay? where you're supposed to mark this out right here and you'll spin the spinner and whatever you get here you'll put here and whatever you get on the second spinner you'll put here and you'll do the division and then your answer will go here okay there's also questions on the back of this as well there's 11 questions on here that's perfect practice for this um, I highly suggest doing the practice for this.